Hello, my name is Jared Ludlow, Publications Director at the BYU Religious Studies Center, your weekly resource for gospel scholarship. Today I'd like to share some possible resources that can accompany your Come Follow Me reading for April 15th through 21st, Enos Through Words of Mormon. The first one is on Enos and is called Enos, His Mission and His Message by Dennis Largy, a retired faculty member from Ancient Scripture. And it's from a volume the RSC published called The Book of Mormon, Jacob Through Words of Mormon to Learn with Joy. One of the first points he makes is that Enos inherited Nephi's record-keeping responsibilities and also spoke as from the dust. What was his plea? Whom did he think his readers would be? What principles did he want them to learn? That's what he then goes on to talk about in his article. A second point he makes is that scripture, the writings of Enos, contribute to both doctrine and instruction. Although Enos's words are few, his doctrine and commentary support other writers throughout the Book of Mormon and other scriptures. Gospel principles are embedded in his struggle to know God and in his determination to serve him. And then he goes through and gives nine such supported precepts or instructions in righteousness that make Enos a, mo a most significant voice from the dust. And then he kind of talks a little bit about application. He says, we who are parents need to pause and ask ourselves if our children have heard our testimonies. Do they hear them often? Do they know how we feel about Jesus and his atonement? Have they heard our missionary experiences? And have they heard the testimonies of their aunts, uncles, grandparents, and cousins? It may not be so much the particular words that they remember, but it is the spirit that was present when the words were spoken. And that's what lasts. And it is difficult, if not impossible, to forget the taste of the spirit coupled with family love. He concludes with this thought. The Book of Enos gives us important instructions in righteousness, which, if we follow, will bring us nearer to God. Enos's remarkable conversion, ministry, life of diligent service, and his proving himself faithful in all things after being born of the Spirit all earned Enos the confidence he expressed just prior to writing his last words. The second article is called Faith Unto Repentance. It's by Brent Topp a retired faculty member from Religious Education, and comes from a volume the RSC published called A Book of Mormon Treasury, Gospel Insights from General Authorities and Religious Educators. One of the first points he makes is that without a knowledge and acceptance of what the scriptures generally, and the Book of Mormon specifically, teach about the doctrine of repentance, one may seek through self-justification to make repentance easier than it really is, or through doctrinal distortion to make it more difficult than it needs to be. When we view repentance as a mere checklist of steps that must be taken for every sin ever committed, we fall prey to the spiritual pitfalls and doctrinal deficiencies of such a simplistic and superficial approach. Several deficiencies, each with potential pitfalls, are evident. He also makes the point that repentance stems only from faith in the redemptive and cleansing power of the blood of the Lamb of God. In his conclusion, he talks about how within the Book of Mormon there are some very dramatic examples of people whose sins were forgiven and they experienced spiritual rebirth in dramatic or almost sensational events, such as Enos and King Lamoni and his wife, King Benjamin's people. But what about us? Will each of us experience this cleansing spiritual regeneration in the same manner? And the answer is probably not as dramatic as that. But he says, Through Book of Mormon and other ancient and modern prophets, the Lord continues to extend an invitation to all to come unto him, the physician of men's souls, and be healed spiritually. All who desire to be clean, to have the heavy burden of sin lifted, and to once again feel God's love and approbation, may receive the miracle of forgiveness, if they will but approach the Savior with faith unto repentance. The third article that corresponds to this week is entitled, That They May Know How to Come Unto Him and Be Saved. It's by Chad Webb, an administrator of seminaries and institutes for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And it was published in a religious educator volume. And this actually comes from a devotional that he gave at Brigham Young University, Hawaii, in March of 2016. At the beginning, he asked some questions about why does it sometimes seem so difficult to find and hold on to truth? 
For some, it may be that they simply do not know where to find truth. Others, like those in Lehi's vision, may be confused by all the voices. In a world that values the tolerance and acceptance of any type of behavior, we may feel embarrassed to speak up for to live what we believe to be true. For others, it may be difficult to find and hold on to truth because they want to rely on their own reasoning and logic rather than turn to the Lord. Pride may lead us to care more about being right than knowing and choosing the right. He also says that there may be times when we discover new information that seems difficult to understand or when we have questions regarding the doctrine, practices, or history of the church that seem difficult to answer. This might happen when we come across new information during our personal study, or it might happen when someone challenges our faith. Whatever the reason, there will be times when we each have questions. He suggests four principles that can bless and help us during these crucial occasions. He then goes on and lists and discusses those four principles. And here's part of his conclusion we can find answers to our questions. As you and I go through life, including this divinely appointed process of coming to know and love our Father in Heaven, please do not be perplexed by all the noise and chaos in the world. You know where to look for truth. You know where to turn for safety in a troubled world. Call upon your Heavenly Father. He is here to help you with open and loving arms. Trust Him. He will lead you safely home. He will guide you in your quest to know his Son, the Redeemer of the world, and to know the very points of his doctrine that you may know how to come unto him and be saved. <laughs>